Hi guys, today I'm going to talk to you on how to perform mole calculations. But before we begin, don't forget to grab a highlighter, something to write with, a calculator, and you also need a periodic table. Okay? Okay, so let's begin. Um, we talked about moles in a previous uh, um, video, but I'm going to talk about the mole really quick with you guys. And keep in mind that a mole is a standard quantity that, so mole is a fundamental quantity or a standard quantity that measures the amount of matter that is present either um, in an atom, okay? And keep in mind that an atom is the smallest unit of an element. It also can measure formula units, and your formula units is used to describe the smallest unit of an ionic compound. And then you have molecules, and molecules are the smallest unit of a covalent compound. And keep in mind that covalent compounds are usually non-metals only. So a mole is a standard quantity that measures the amount of matter that is in a substance. And uh, whenever we do talk about the mole, you have the relationship where one mole is equal to Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of atoms formula units. And I'm just going to write that abbreviation or molecules. It doesn't make a difference. Keep in mind that when we talk about an atom, we're talking about an element, a single element that's on the periodic table, such as sodium. Formula units are ionically bonded, so something some, that could be ionically bonded, such as sodium chloride. A molecule is covalently bonded, so any substance that is covalently bonded, such as water. So there is a difference where when we talk about atoms, we're talking about a single element, but when we're talking about formula units or molecules, we are talking about a bunch of um, elements that are put together, um, a bunch of different elements that are put together. Okay, so that's where the difference comes in. Um, when we're talking about calculating um, mole problems, you're always going to be using dimensional analysis. Okay, every single time, hands down, use dimensional analysis. Um, this is a, the most simple equation for a mole, where the number of moles is equal to the number of particles divided by Avogadro's number. But because we're do, doing, we're solving for different types of problems, this equation you would have to manipulate. But in order to understand what's really going on, it's better to use dimensional analysis where you can understand how to set up the problem. Now keep in mind that when you are using dimensional analysis, you are always going to be following the units. So use your units to always guide you. You always start your dimensional analysis problem with your given, and then because you are trying to cancel the unit out, you're going to cancel diagonally, and the unit that you are trying to solve for will always end up on the top in the numerator. Okay. So let's do an example problem. So our example problem is right here. Let me zoom in. That helps, okay. Um, how many moles are in 1.85 times 10 to the 24th atoms of helium? So this is what's given to you and you are trying to find how many moles. So using dimensional analysis, we would take this problem, start off with what is given to us, so 1.85 times 10 to the 24 atoms of helium, okay, atoms of helium. Since we want our answer to have the unit of moles rather than atoms, we're going to put atoms down. And you know the relationship between an atom and a mole. It's this relationship right here that I gave you, where one mole is equal to Avogadro's number. So we're going to use atoms because this Avogadro's number can either have the unit atoms, formula units, or molecules. In this case, we have atoms, so we're going to use the unit atoms. 
So we're going to use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of helium. This Avogadro's number is equal to one mole, which will go on the top instead. So moles of helium will go on top. Now we can cancel our units out. So we can cancel our atoms of helium. Remember in dimensional analysis, the only way you can cancel units is diagonally. And the unit that is left over is moles of helium, which is on top now. Okay, you're going to use your calculator to um, solve for this equation. So you're going to take any numbers that are on top in the numerator, you're going to divide, you're going to multiply all the numerators, and then you're going to divide by all the denominators. So since there isn't a number, you can either leave this blank, but if this blank area bothers you, then you can always place a one, but keep in mind that there is an imaginary one there. Okay, so let's try to start our calculator. We have 1.85, so 1.85 times 10 to the 24. So we're going to use that second E. So second, right above the X is that X minus 1. We're going to put in 24. And then we're going to multiply by 1. That's still the same number, so I'm not going to do that. Just rather going to divide by Avogadro's number. So divide by 6.02. 23. Okay, so my answer comes out to be 3.07 moles, okay, of helium. That is my answer right there, which makes sense because if you have 1.85 times 10 to the 24th atoms of helium, that will be equal to 3.07 moles of helium because this number is about three times as big as this number right here. So of course you're going to have um, the, um, three times as many moles of it. Let's do problem number two together. So it says here a sample contains 3.5 moles of aluminum powder. How many atoms of aluminum are present? So that is what we are trying to find. Okay, start off with what is given to us. In this case it is 3.50 moles of aluminum. Okay, we are trying to cancel moles of aluminum in find atoms. So going back to this relationship that we have right here, where one mole is equal to Avogadro's number, and again we're looking for atoms of aluminum, which is a single element, so we're going to use this um, unit. So we're going to start off with one mole because we want to cancel one mole. So one mole of aluminum, and it's going to be equal to Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. Okay, cancel your units, circle the unit that is left over. Now let's put that in our calculator. Okay, so I'm going to put in my calculator this time. I'm going to put in 3.50 and I'm going to multiply by Avogadro's number since Avogadro's number is on top, which is in the numerator. Keep in mind, you always multiply numerators and any numbers that are in the denominator, you would divide by those numbers. So in this case, in this case, we are actually multiplying by Avogadro's number, which gives us 3.50 one and the question is now what's my answer going to be how many significant figures this is one two three significant figures so your answer is going to have three significant figures also so it's going to be 2.11 times 10 to the 24th atoms of aluminum okay so we want to keep the significant figures in mind too the number of significant figures in your given is how many significant figures your answer will have. Okay? Go ahead and do number three, number four, and number five on your own. And right here, number three, four, and five on your own. And then look up once you are done to check to see that you have gotten the correct answer. Okay, so now look up. Um, if you need more time, then 
go ahead and pause the video. If not, then I'm just going to go ahead with number three, four, and five. Number three, you were solving for how many molecules of ethane are present in 2.5 moles. So your final answer should be 1.51 times 10 to the 24th molecules of ethane. You were multiplying 2.50 moles of ethane by Avogadro's number. Um, number four, how many moles are there in 2.45 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water? Start off with what you were given, 2.45 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. You, Since we're de, um, trying to find moles, we are in our problems going to go from molecules of water to moles. That means you are going to be dividing by Avogadro's number. Um, Avogadro's number. So when you do divide it, your given has three significant figures. Your final answer will also have three significant figures. So that comes out to be 0 0.407 moles of water. Okay. The number five is how many formula units are in sodium chloride? Um, in 3.7 moles. So start off with what you were given, 3.7 moles of, of sodium chloride, and you were trying to find the formula units. So in this case, we're going to convert moles into Avogadro's number um, for formula units right here. So we're going to multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. When you multiply this, realize that you, you were only given two significant figures, so your final answer will also have two significant figures. So your final answer will not only have a number, a unit, but it should also have a compound in order for it to be a complete answer. Um, do not just give a number or a unit, um, but you need to give the number, unit, as well as the compound. So in this case, our answer is 2.2. 2.2 times 10 to the 24th formula units of sodium chloride. Okay, so let's move on to the next page. Okay, so we're now moving on to page two, where we're counting atoms in formula units or molecules. So what happened earlier is that you were given one mole of something is equal to Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd um, we can say molecules of water, or we can say um, formula units of sodium chloride. Okay, the problem with this is that when we're talking about molecules, you're talking about a substance that has more than one element that's attached to it. The same is true for a formula unit. These are, um, these are elements that are ionically bonded in the formula unit and covalently bonded in a molecule. But if we're talking about atoms, then we have to break it down further in order to talk about the individual, um, the individual atom for hydrogen and oxygen in the case of molecules, or sodium and chlorine in the case of the formula units. Okay, So in this case, if we go back to our notes here, um, we're trying to find out how many atoms are in the chemical formula of ethane, which is C2H6. Well, for every one molecule of ethane that is present, there are a total of eight atoms. And that makes sense because you have two plus two carbon plus six hydrogens would give you a total of eight atoms. Okay, so two carbons plus six hydrogen gives you a total of eight atoms for the compound ethane, okay? So in this case, we would take it further and we would um, need to compensate for the number of atoms that are in the molecule, that are in the substance. So let's do an example problem, okay? So an example problem is a sample contains eight, 0 0.85 moles of water. So this is what's given to us and we're gonna solve it three, um, four different ways, okay? Each time we'll get deeper and deeper into it. So first it says here, given the moles of water that are present, how many molecules of water are present in this mole? So we have 0 0.85 moles of water, okay? And we wanna convert it to now um, two molecules. So again, we're gonna go back to this conversion factor, 
We're given moles and we want to convert to molecules, so we're going to use Avogadro's number. So going back to our problem, we're going to put one mole of water down here in Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. Okay, um, just as before, you're going to cancel out diagonally and circle the units, the unit that is left over. And so when you put this in the calculator, Point eight five times six point zero two times ten to the twenty third. That should give you, since there are two significant figures, that should give you your answer, which is five point one times ten to the twenty third molecules of water. So that'll be our answer. Okay, so this is our complete answer. Moving on to the next one. It says, how many hydrogen atoms are present now? So if you have 0.85 moles of water, then how many hydrogen atoms are present? So once again, we're going to start off with 0.85 moles of water. But from moles, we can't go directly to atoms um, in this case because you're talking about a molecule that is present. Um, if, they, if we were talking about atoms, then we could go straight into atoms, but we're not. We're actually talking about this is H2O as a molecule. So we're going to first need to break it up into molecules. So this is our conversion factor where one mole is equal to Avogadro's number of molecules of water. So we're going to write here, one mole of water is equal to Avogadro's number, which is on top in the numerator, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. Okay. Now that we have molecules of water, we can now say that in every one molecule of water, there are two hydrogen atoms. So there are two atoms of hydrogen. Okay, so now that we can say that, let's cancel out our units. Moles is canceled out. Molecules should be canceled out. It's diagonally. Um, so the unit that's left over is atoms in this case. So when we put this in our calculator, we have here 0.85 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and then we're going to multiply by 2, because that's also in the numerator, so times 2, and that should give us, tell us how many atoms of hydrogen are present. So, in this case, remember we have two significant figures, so our answer is also going to have two significant figures. In this case, it's 1.0 times 10 to the 24th atoms of hydrogen. So this is our answer. So this is saying, I'll get, see if I can reduce the size of this so you can see the whole thing. Okay, so in this case it's saying that in 0.85 moles of water there's actually 1.0 times 10 to the 24th atoms of hydrogen. Okay, so let's go further on. Let's do it again for oxygen now. It says how many oxygen atoms are present? So again, we have 0.85 moles of water. We need to convert this moles of water into the molecule, which is what H2O is. So one mole of water is equal to Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to 23rd molecules of water, which is in the numerator. And now this one molecule of water actually has a total of one atom of oxygen in it. Okay, so we're looking at this right here, this H2O. We're looking at the oxygen right here. And this oxygen, there's only one oxygen atom. 
So in this case, put it in your calculator again. 0.85 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And you could multiply it by 1 if you want. It's going to give it the exact same answer. So they, that answer is cancel out your units. You have you should have atoms of oxygen. If the unit that you were trying to solve for, in this case, is atoms of oxygen, if that unit is on top in the numerator and everything else is canceled, then chances are that you've set up this problem co correctly. So our answer in this case is 5.1 times 10 to the 23rd um, atoms of oxygen. Okay. So the last problem we have, it says here, how many total number of atoms are in the sample? And the sample that we have is 0.85 moles of water. And that is equal to, we're trying to convert that into molecules first. So one mole of water is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. Okay, and this one molecule of water is equal to a total of three atoms in water, which is H2O. Okay, two hydrogens plus one oxygen will give us three atoms. So if we've done this entire equation correctly, we've set up dimensional analysis correctly, everything should cancel out except for atoms of H2O, which is our total sample, okay, or molecules. So when we put this into our calculator, point eight five times Avogadro's number, and multiplied by, now I'm going to multiply it by three right here, so I'm going to multiply it by three, and that should give me an answer. In this case, it is, I'm looking for two significant figures, so 1.5 times 10 to the 24 atoms of water. So whenever you have um, 0.85 moles of water, you are going to have 1.5 times 10 to the 24 atoms of water, okay? Which makes sense because this is not a complete atom. Um, this is not a complete one mole. Like this equation here, it's not one mole would be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So that makes sense. So always go back and make sure that your answer makes sense. Okay? Okay, so let's do number seven. And there are four problems for number seven. We're dealing with propane. So it says a portable grill contains um, 8.25 times 10 to the 25th molecules of propane. This is what's given. We're trying to find how many moles of propane are there. So we're going to start off with what is given to us, which is 8.25 times 10 to the um, 25th molecules of propane. Okay. Again, you guys, we are going to go back and use this relationship. So if you want to copy this relationship down here, um, you should. If you need to, then do it. Um, because it's, this is the main um, equation that you have for this entire unit. Uh, memorize this relationship right here. So in this case, we're going to have Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of propane. Remember, propane is a molecule, is equal to one mole of the substance. Cancel out molecules, and you should be left with moles, which is the unit you were looking for. Now, your answer is going to have up to three significant figures. So when you put this in your calculator, 8.25 times 10 to the 25th, divided by Avogadro's number to the 23rd, you are going to be left with 137 
moles of propane. So whenever you have 8.25 times 10 to the 24th molecules of propane, this is, you have 137 moles of propane that's present. So right here now it says how many moles of hydrogen um, are in the sample. So we're going to start off again with what we are given. So 8.25 times 10 to the 25th molecules of propane. Again, you are going to, um, you have in this case, this, you're trying to solve for how many moles of hydrogen are present. That's what you're trying to find. So what that means is that in this one molecule of propane, you actually have a total of eight atoms of hydrogen. Okay. And that's where this comes in. This eight is telling you that there are eight atoms of hydrogen. So if we have Avogadro's number, which is atom 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, again, we're going to go back to this relationship, will be equal to one mole. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen is actually equal to one mole of hydrogen. Okay, so we're working this a little bit backwards. We're starting off with molecules, and with this molecule, we're now breaking it up and saying, well, this is one molecule has this many atoms. Therefore, if, if, it ha if this molecule has this many atoms, then you can find then the relationship between one mole of that element is Avogadro's number. Okay, so we're actually working a little bit backwards on that. Um, remember, anything that's on top, you're going to multiply and then divide by all the, new, um, all the numbers that are in the denominator. So in this case, we have 8.25 times 10 to the 25th times 8 divided by Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay. And in this case, you guys, you are dealing with three significant figures again. So our answer, we're going to round it up to three significant figures um, in this case. So it's going to be one. And I'm going to put this, um, I'm going to put this, go ahead and put this in scientific notation to make it a lot easier. So it's going to be 1.10 times 10 to the third. So I'm going to move this decimal one to three places, so 1.10, okay, times 10 to the 23rd moles of hydrogen, okay. Moving on, it says here how many moles of oxygen, go ahead and scratch out oxygen, we're really talking about carbon in the sample because we're dealing with propane. So how many moles of carbon, same way as before, we're going to start off with what's given to us. So it's 8.25 times 10 to the 25th molecules, okay, in propane. Now, in one molecule of propane, you actually have three atoms of carbon, okay? So if we're talking about um, moles, then keep in mind that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon will actually be equal to one mole of carbon. Okay? Cancel out any units that are diagonally. The unit remaining should be the unit that we are trying to solve for. And when you plug this into your calculator, 8.25 to the 25th times 3 divided by Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and that should give you um, again you have three significant figures so we're going to have three significant figures 411 atoms of carbon okay so that's going to be our answer and then the last one is how many total atoms are in our sample Again, we're going to start off with what the um, number that is given to us, which is 8.25 times 10 to the 25th 
molecules of propane. Okay, and we have one molecule of propane that is that has a total of three three carbons plus eight hydrogens, which gives us a total of eleven atoms in our sample, which is propane. Okay, in our sample of propane. So that's it. You don't even, in this case, you don't even have to use Avogadro's number because we're just asking for the total number of atoms that are present in this molecule of propane. So it's 8.25 times 10 to the 25th times 11. And that should give us a total of 9.08 times 10 to the 26th atoms of propane. Okay. Um, so, or we could in this case, instead of writing, we can just say carbon and hydrogen. Since really those are the elements we are looking for, carbon and hydrogen. Go ahead and just to clarify, so just to clarify, because it does say, looking at the problem, says how many total atoms are present. I'm going to say um, there are a total of 11 atoms of carbon and of hydrogen. Okay, so my answer is also going to be carbon and hydrogen. Okay, okay. So hopefully that helps you. So our answer in this case is when you have 8.25 times 10 to the 25th molecules of propane, you will have a total of 9.08 times 10 to the 26th atoms of carbon and hydrogen that's present. And just to be clear, I think I'm going to do the same thing for, for number 6 in 6D that we have. So for 60, I want to just clarify, this says total number of atoms. So it would be three atoms of hydrogen and oxygen. So our answer would be 1.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms of hydrogen and oxygen. You could put H2O, but really we're just talking about atoms. So it's best to just say hydrogen and oxygen. Break it up. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so let's move on to page 3, where we are now using uh, molar mass in Avogadro's number. So I'm just going to go back and redo um, do this problem right here on number nine, our sample for uh, aluminum nitrate. Okay, just to review with you on how you get the how you find the molar mass of a substance. So aluminum nitrate is right here, our formula. So you want to write down the formula always. Okay, and of course we're now going to this is where you were actually using the periodic table. You have aluminum which is one atom of, alu of aluminum. You're going to multiply it by the molar mass on your periodic table of aluminum. So in this case, it is 26.98. So 26.98 plus nitrogen. Realize in this case, you have three atoms of nitrogen. So it's three times. Nitrogen in this case is 14.01 and we're going to look up oxygen also which is 16 okay so keep in mind that these molar masses that are here it's actually uh, nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole what that means is that it is 14.01 grams for every one mole and you know that uh, one mole is also equal to Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And in this case, since we're talking about nitrogen, we're going to say it's atoms of nitrogen. So you can look at it either way. This mole, you can either go to the number of atoms in this case, or you can use moles to get to the mass, which is measured in grams. And that's why we use the word molar mass. Molar mass means mole and mass ratio that is present, okay? And that's the mass that's given to you on the periodic table. So for nitrogen, it is 14.01 plus, and you're going to add the number of oxygen atoms, 
In this case, there are a total of nine oxygen atoms, which is 16.00. You can just write 16. Um, you don't have to write 0 .00. Okay, and then we're just simply going to add everything up. So it is um, 26.98. Plus, and this is where you can use your parentheses, 3 times 14.01, close parentheses, plus 9, right here, 9, um, let me go back and open up parentheses, 9 times 16, and close parentheses. And that should give you your molar mass. So aluminum nitrate has the molar mass of 200. 13.01 grams per mole or for every one mole okay so what does that mean when we're solving our equation let's look at number 10 in our example a sample contains 200 um 399.25 grams of iron 3 oxide so how many moles is this okay so you're simply um, starting off with what is given to you and you want to find how many moles that is. So it's 399.25 grams of iron 3 oxide. Okay. Now you can find the molar mass of iron 3 oxide. And so if we find the molar mass of this, and you do need to show your work, this would be iron in this case would be 19 um wait that's fluorine iron in this case would be 55.85 and oxygen remember is 16 in this case okay so we're going to say 2 times 55.85 okay plus 3 times our mass for oxygen that should give you a total of times 2 plus 3, let me go back, put parentheses 3 times 16, and that should give you 159.7 grams per mole. So since we're dealing with grams, 159.7 grams of iron three oxide for every one mole of iron three oxide okay and when you plug this into the calculator you should for your answer get 2.5 and since we're dealing with one two three four five one two three four five moles of iron oxide okay so let me pull this up in case you weren't able to see 3.99.25 divided by your molar mass 159.7 and that should give you 2.5000 moles of iron 3 oxide 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 um, significant digits in our answer Okay, I do want you to use dimensional analysis again. So make sure that you are using dimensional analysis to solve all of these problems. Okay, use dimensional analysis. Okay, okay, so go on to page four and go ahead and do problems 11, 12, 13, 14. And once you are do done with the problems, then look up and check your answers. Okay, okay, you guys, so we're going to check your work. So a sample contains 3.5 moles of aluminum. What is the mass in grams? In this case, you're going to use your periodic table to find the mass of aluminum. And since you're given moles, you're going to convert, you're going to put one moles on the bottom in the denominator, and you're going to put the mass of aluminum, which you found on your periodic table, right here, the mass of aluminum, in this case is 26.98 grams. Okay, cancel the moles, and you should be left with aluminum. Multiply the numerators together, divide by the denominators, and you should get 94.4 grams of aluminum. So this has three significant figures. Your answer should also have three significant figures. Okay, 
The next one, a beaker contains 0.85 moles of water. What is the mass in grams? So since we are looking for the mass, we know that we need to do, we need to find the molar mass of water. So use your periodic table and show your work to um, show your work for the molar mass. So in this case, uh, um, the molar mass of water is 18.01 grams per mole. So start off with what is given to you, 0.85 moles of water. For every one mole of water, you have 18.01 grams of water, okay? So uh, actually it's two, 18.02 grams of water. So multiply the numerators, divide by the denominators, and you should get 15 grams of water. Um, an experiment produces 69 grams of sodium chloride. How many moles of salt is this? Start off with what is given to you. Since we are going from grams to moles of the salt, that means you're gonna to need to find the molar mass of sodium chloride. Use the periodic table to find the molar mass of sodium chloride. There's one atom of sodium. Each sodium atom weighs 22.99 grams per mole according to your periodic table. And of course, chlorine is 35.45 grams per mole, and there's only one atom of it. Add the two together, you should get 58.44 grams per mole. Um, which you were given is 69 grams of sodium chloride divided by the mass of sodium chloride. Uh, 58.44 should give you the moles of sodium chloride. So 69 grams of sodium chloride actually has 1.18 moles of sodium chloride in it. The last example is a lab requires 37 grams of, sodium, of calcium hydroxide. How many moles is this? Start off with what is given to you. Since we're dealing with converting um, calcium hydroxide from grams to moles, find molar mass. And when you do, you get 74.1 gram, 74 grams per mole. So um, 37 grams of calcium hydroxide divided by the molar mass which is 74.1, should give you 0 0.499 moles of calcium hydroxide. Since your answer has one, two, three significant figures, um, your given has three significant figures, your answer will also have three significant figures. Keep in mind, you guys, that when we are, to, um, when we are talking about significant figures of answers, um, you only use the significant figure of your experimental given value. So in this case, you are looking at the given, which is three significant figures. This is an experimental value that they found in lab. Molar mass is a, is a value that is always constant. It's a constant because of the values on the periodic table. So in this case, you never take into consideration the, um, the number of significant figures of your molar mass, okay? So never take that into consideration. Only consider the experimental value in your problem, which is usually your given. Okay, so I hope you um, learned how to calculate uh, moles, atoms, molecules, formula units, and mass from this lecture. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.